Hello and welcome back to Beaver Hunter Scale Models. In the first video of this two-parter, I showed how I built this vignette for my Valinden Power Troopers. And today I want to show you how I painted and finished it. So let's not waste time and get to work. I started by painting the signs made out of balsa wood with thick black acrylic paint. This is important for later weathering. And in addition the window frame and the opening were painted black too. Then I grabbed my airbrush and primed the whole vignette with black acrylic primer. I usually like to use Rattlecan primer to prime dioramas, but this melts styrofoam, which was still exposed here. So I decided to go the airbrush way this time. To open the brush painting section, I painted the cobblestones with neutral grey as a base for further accentuations. While these were drying, I primed the facade with a beige grey tone. I wanted to create a gloomy dirty facade that matched the atmosphere. To give the ground more variation I painted individual stones in different grey and earth tones. The yellowish middle stone was later too disturbing for me. So I toned it down by painting over it with other diluted grey tones. If you like what you see, I would be very happy if you consider subscribing and leave me some feedback. And if you are interested in more regular content, feel free to check out my Instagram. Acrylic paint that is heavily diluted with retarder blends almost as well as enamels with thinner. So I brushed the facade with a layer of darker base paint mixed with retarda and tap water and worked burnt umber diluted with retarda into the still wet paint to simulate first shadows and dirt. Really interesting results can be achieved this way. Logically the paint needs much longer to dry afterwards. To paint the exposed bricks I looked for a color that was as close as possible to the bricks from Juvela. I want to place the Juvela bricks as rubble later. The choice fell on a rust tone from AK. Then I did a wash with dark grey paint to tone down the bright red a bit and get closer to the Juvela stones. To bring out the joints and make the stones look dustier and more worn, I did a wash with heavy diluted deck tan. The bricks were also treated in the same way. To create the joints between the bricks, I used Juvela's joint compound. Apply, remove excess with a soft brush until you are satisfied with the look and then drip VMS sand and ballast trees on top to fix it. I realized that the plaster damage on the right bricks didn't look very natural and too straight. So I grabbed my acrylic wood paste again and created a slightly less intentional looking transition. While doing so I dropped some paste directly onto the bricks to imitate mortar residue and gives the bricks more texture. When it was dry I only had to color match it to the facade, which was again done by using paint diluted with retarder applied wet and wet. With that done I was able to focus on the ground again. A wash with light mud gave it an earthy dusty look and highlightened the joints of the bricks. For the natural stone frame of the window I used a greyish tone as a base. 
This was then lightened with deck 10 and worked in with Retarda to simulate an uneven surface. After drying I did some dry brushing on the ground to show wear and tear and some shipping and to highlight the edges of the frame stones. I used dark brown paint to show dirt strains that can appear along a window. This was again diluted with retarder and blended into the facade. And in the lower area I tried to recreate shadows that way. To recreate the lettering on the building's facade I covered a stripe with masking tape and dabbed on the paint with a sponge. I wanted to recreate the look of an old worn coat of paint this way and I chose the dark red what felt kind of matching to me. I then used a fine brush to paint letter by letter trying to recreate the lettering from the reference photo. To make the letters look old and worn too I dropped and painted on some of the red again. Not perfect, but I guess it will do. To represent the debris of the damaged house, I used bricks and rubble in the box from Juvela. Therefore the color matching of the bricks in the house. Apply bricks and rubble and spread until satisfied. Then drizzle some VMS over it to set it. The VMS stuff has a slight sheen after drying, so I sprayed on a few coats of ultramat varnish. Time for the little things. After I painted the window frame with a dark brown paint, I applied a light grey tone and then a wooden tone by dry brushing. I cut out the window panes from clear plastic packaging and then glued them in place. I also added cracks in the glass with my hobby knife. Then I glued it in place with wood glue and removed the excess glue with a wet brush. With light mud I applied a dusty layer to the window panes and tried to blend it which is not very easy on the smooth plastic. Instead of going the easy way and using decals for the signs, I wanted to paint them by hand. Even if that means they aren't perfect, but I think they are more authentic like that and hey, it's handmade. Corrections are easily made with the base paint. In order to create some wood grain, I scratched the freshly applied paint with my hobby knife. This brings out the black paint that was applied in a thick layer at the very beginning and is now showing through. And as a last step some dark brown oil paint to make it look a bit less brand new. I also decided on a red base paint for the oval sign and after the base paint I tried to imitate the look. I didn't succeed 100% but it's hand painted and I think it's more authentic than using decals and overall I'm happy with the result. So that it doesn't look brand new I did some chipping with dark grey paint and emphasized these areas with AK rust streaks enamels. As usual I applied the enamel paint, let it dry briefly and then blended it with thinner. To finish off the building and the ground I used dark brown oil paint diluted with thinner 
to optically emphasize deep spots such as joints at the window or between the paving stones. Only the lowest points have been treated, also to indicate shadows. The sides, previously only primed with the airbrush, were given a coat of thin black acrylic paint. Two to three coats may be necessary depending on how the sides look and how they suffer during the painting. And then the assembly began. The signs were glued on with wood glue. The paratroopers were fixed in and on the base with super glue. I took a helmet and an M1 Garand from my grab bag, painted them and placed them as additional details. They are supposed to be from the wounded paratrooper. Now I could glue the vignette to the wooden base with wood glue. I thought it would be a cool detail if I attached a small version of the reference photo to the base, so you can tell there's an existing template for this build. And I did this with a narrow double sided tape. And with that, we finally made it. Thank you all for your patience and for watching my video. It was a pleasure to build this vignette and I'm starting to enjoy the small projects that don't always take like six months to complete. And I'm really happy with the result here. Even there's always room for improvement and with that, I would be very happy if you leave me some feedback, if you consider subscribing, if you like what you saw and hopefully see you again. Stay safe. Goodbye.